G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FB Australia. Welcome back to On The Couch, although this time we have to be on the virtual couch because of uh, current situation. So I'm not on a couch, I'm in my office, but you get the picture. Joining me today on the virtual couch, I've got Chris Shane from uh, Images for Business. Welcome to the virtual couch, Chris. G'day John, thank you. Um, uh, how are you coping with all of this uh, COVID craziness? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Our business is... Um pretty heavily involved in infrastructure and construction and heavy industry stuff and that's sort of been you know chipping along reasonably normally so uh, we've certainly lost some things but um, you know our underlying business is still trucking along okay. Well that, that leads me segued perfectly into my first sort of probe at, uh, at what it is you do. You're in the drone industry of sorts, um, you were recently on one of our chief pilot training courses. What exactly does Images for Business do in the drone industry? We uh, we are uh, well. I have forty years of history as a photographer um, and been involved in this in this sort of industrial activity for that long. Um, and as time's gone on, technology's changed, uh, clients' requirements have changed, their expectations have changed, and so to survive in business. Uh, you've got to kind of be a little bit versatile and be prepared to take on new things. Drones, obviously, uh, as a photographer and as a visual imaging company, which is what we are, uh, drones are a bit of a no-brainer, really. We've had requests from clients to, uh, over the, but certainly over the last probably four or five years, oh, you know, can you do some drone pictures? We subbed that out for a little while. But probably three years ago, I made a you know a strategic decision to make drone uh, imagery a part of our business. I've had a lot of experience with aerial photography, mostly out of helicopters, right over over these years. So I have a bit of an understanding of, of what happens. Yep. I'm certainly not a pilot. Well, not a you know not a uh, an aircraft type pilot, but certainly, and I have an interest in aviation. Always been a lot of fun. So, so that's. So if, uh, what you're saying is so drones are not your primary business. You've, you've brought drones into an existing business structure. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so value added to, to what you already op- offer the client, I guess. Yes. yes. Excellent. Okay. And, and in, the, in the drone space, are, they, are we talking large drones, small drones? Oh, well, so aircraft-wise, they're classified as small. The biggest thing we have is an, ins- an Inspire 2. Oh, yep. Okay. Good. Um, although I'm thinking every now and then, I think, gee, it'd be good to um, get into a Matrice or something like that. But yep. um, the Inspire 2 is good, okay. really, for a stability platform, basically. I mean, the small ones are good, uh, Mavics and so on. They're easy to carry around. But yep. the the and, uh, something like an Inspire is going to be more stable, basically, which is okay. why we did it. And you're operating as a certified operator, so a complete REOC type arrangement, correct? Yes. Was that a decision you made? Um, because we all know the ability to operate sub two kilo without the licensing. What was your? What, can I ask what your thought process one was behind becoming fully certified? Um, re, we there are three pilots in the business, um, uh, and I'm the oldest one. Have you noticed my grey hair? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have similar issues, mate. <laughs> um, and so I'm always being interested in training in what and, and taking on new things. Um, the 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 sub two kilo thing to me three or four years ago looked a little bit too easy in a way. So it struck me if we're going to get into this, let's do it properly. Was was really the rationale. And so uh, I went and got my license first of all. Uh, that was probably two and a half years ago. I did the training and um, got my own uh, pilot's license. And from then on, the other two guys, uh, we wanted to get them involved. If we're going to do this commercially, we have a couple of contracts with government, for instance. Yep. Our insurance was an interesting one because I talked with our insurance broker about it back then. Yep. And they say, that's fine, but you need to have a re-op. We're not going to, we basically won't cover a business. Yep. As an individual maybe, but as a business, you need to be properly certified. Yeah, look, we're finding that a lot actually. A lot of government departments and large corporates won't touch anyone that's not fully insured. And when I say fully insured, uh, a, lot of, a lot of what we do requires a minimum of 20 million public liability. And I, was it, were you in the group I was talking with re- recently where someone mentioned 50 million public yeah, liability? 
We have we have a contract um, uh, with yeah with, with the government, it's New South Wales government yep. area. Yes, uh, um, where it's involved in the rail industry basically, yep. and they have this stipulation. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Probably even if you were the, you know, collecting train tickets, um, you have to have fifty million dollars public liability. So you, yeah. you can't be on this panel without it. Yeah, and I think we'll see more of that when it comes to large, large organisations. That's for sure. Which um, was interesting to get, to be honest with you. Our insurance broker was pretty helpful with that. Yep. They were initially very standoffish because they said, if you're doing something that needs fifty million dollars public liability. <laughs> What is it that you're doing that needs that, that sort of cover? So That's true. They're probably worried about what you're playing with. Is it radioactive? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, it, it, it got sorted out in the end. And awesome. So it's sort of nice in a way because we have got over a pretty high bar to be able to supply to to some areas that, that, are, that are requesting this sort of stuff. So we can prove and have... Great, you know, we can show great competency in what we're doing. Absolutely, if someone's willing to, to put fifty million bucks behind you, that's that's not a bad feather in the bow. Um, can I ask your, your entry into the drone industry? How did you find it? I mean, how, when I say how did you find it, not as in the yellow pages. What was your experience like coming into the drone industry? Which is probably, if I can be so rude to say, the aviation industry was probably something you'd never played with much before. I gather. Yeah, I had a, had a little bit actually. I've always had an interest in in planes. Right. Eh? Uh, uh, you know, if you believed in reincarnation, I'd come back as a bird, I think. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Absolutely. And, and as a photographer, you'll find most photographers are interested in technology and gizmos. The photographers are probably the, you know, our partners and, and um, bank managers go, man, what do you need to buy that for? You know, oh, yeah, because it's new and different. Um, so um, how did we find the industry? Um uh, I, I sort of find, found it exciting, actually. I found it really exciting um, cool. and, and interesting, just Excellent. as a technology point of view. And the regulatory, without without going full into the regulatory stuff, the, the law, the rules and regulations, have you got an opinion on that? How, how, do, you, how do you feel they are at the minute with what you've experienced? Uh, I'm all for it, is the short story. I yep. think it's a great idea. I yep. think what the government and CASA haven't quite got organised yet, and we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, this is my own personal opinion, obviously, but um, that there's a bit of a way to go to sort out the unlicensed, the non-commercial operators. Yeah. That's an area that just seems to be a bit sort of cowboy, really. Yeah, I think technology's, technology's moved at such a pace that it's, uh, it yeah. can be difficult to keep up. Yeah. Um, a left of left of centre question, where, will, um, where do you think images for business will be in five years' time? What's your... If you could have a crystal ball, where, where would you like your business from five years from now? Uh, doing doing what we're doing and doing it better, um, which is what we will be doing. Good answer. Um, I'm getting younger people involved in the business. Uh, yep. One of my sons works full-time in the business, and we've got a full-time photographer, an admin person, yeah. um, and a couple of other people sort of work part-time. We've got um, freelance contributors, um, including a, a very um, substantial drone business that we um, have used uh, and, and sub work out to in the past. And if we had a really complex uh, drone job, we would we would uh, pass it out basically because there is obviously a lot of activities within the drone business mm -hmm. that require very specialised um, understanding of how to how to do it. You know, if you're doing mapping or something like that, or maybe yep. um, specialised uh, units. Yep. Work, um, you need you need a set of skills, and we're we're not. Um, sort of too proud to say, hey, listen, we need to get someone else in to deal with this. Yep. And on that same note, I mentioned earlier, you jumped on our chief remote pilot training. Um, personal experience on that, how did you find that? Was it was it beneficial to you? Did you get what you needed? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it sort of reminded me, in fact, about how valuable it is to have some, online, uh, some, some ongoing training. It's just super important to keep up to speed with, yep. you know, with actually what's going on yep. in the industry. Um, and, you know, I, I made a conscious decision probably a year, maybe a year, 18 months ago when CASA started to say, right, we're going to fix up these regulations and especially commercial operators, you know, they've been talking, they've been talking about all sorts of stuff, obviously. Yeah. Um, I kind of thought this is, this is potentially going to get a bit more difficult uh, just from a compliance point of view. 
And so I kind of made the decision, yep, we're going to do this. So if we're going to do it, we've got to comply. We have to get organised. Yeah. Um, and so to me, having training, because it's probably, you know, a year, yeah, I guess a year since I've sort of had formal sit-down discussion with somebody like yourself to, okay, what's happening here, what's happening there. Yep. And uh, you need to refresh yourself, you know. If, if you're doing it every day, well, maybe even if you're doing it every day, you need to refresh yourself because you can't possibly keep on top of all uh, that. Absolutely. That, that's a, that, you make a really valid point. In fact, I was talking to my accountant not long ago and um, I think it's mandatory for them to remain whatever certification level they've got to yep. do ongoing personal development training every yep. year, a minimum amount of hours, um, yep. which was sort of the reasoning why we launched that, that compliance training because we wanted to make sure people had an avenue to top yep. themselves up. So I'm, I'm glad you got that out of it. That, that's really cool. Um, yep. I guess one other question I'd like to ask is if, without sort of, you know, helping your competition along, but if you, if you were to give uh, advice to a young person possibly, because I'm, I'm really thrilled when young people take the bull by the horns and Absolutely. try and make something for themselves. If you were going to give some advice to young people, either in the drone industry or your industry or whatever it is, what, what would be a piece of advice? Maybe someone gave it to you. What's a key piece of advice you might give to someone in the up and coming? Oh, look, the, the thing is to, to go out and do it is probably the first thing. As I mean, as a photographer, the first thing I would say to a young photographer is just get out and shoot pictures, you know, yep. and, and experience things. But along with that, go and talk to and get involved with people with more experience. Um, yep. get, get an apprenticeship or something like that or a traineeship. Yep. So, and I'd say the same thing to a drone person. But drones particularly, I think, require a good understanding of the law Yep. A camera, obviously, as a photographer, you can go and buy a camera and go and shoot pictures and sell them, that's fine. But if you are commercially intending to fly a drone, you need to get your head around what you can and can't do, what's reasonable. And so doing a, a pilot's course would be, you know, number one. And I think, I don't know whether you guys do it, but there are certainly a few shorter courses around for yep. sub two kilo operators for yep. instance that, that are not as involved as a full license yep. but will give you some basic understanding that you know I, I would just highly recommend even do a one day course with someone and say you know give, give yep. them some ideas yeah look it's the reason we put out we got a free training modules up on our website called drone sense which uh, we, we think is pretty valuable um, I, I'm, I'm a bit like you I like to look at people who've done very well in what I want to achieve and, and I try and work out you know how I can how I can replicate that rather than there's sort of two people in this world I guess those who are jealous of success and those who crave it and I'm, yeah. uh, I'm one that wants to find someone who's successful and, and hence this conversation with you even um, just to go right well what can I learn from, from these people I think everybody you meet in life gives you something to, 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 to learn and, yeah. and to give back a little I guess which is a good thing um, lastly I've, mate I've actually got a, along that I've yes got a, a thing on my wall, actually, that's sort of a bit of a mantra. Yes. You become who you hang around with. Absolutely. So surround yourself in positive, positive people in your life. That's a very good, very good uh, statement. Very, very good. So chance to plug yourself, mate. Images for business. Um, you know, people who watch this video might not necessarily be drone pilots. They might be people who are interested in getting uh, services delivered by, by people such as yourself. So images for business. How do we find you, first and foremost? Well, if you go to our website, which is images for business with for.com.au, you'll see all about us. There's a lot of information in there. You'll see the people, myself and the other people involved with the business, pictures of them, they're real people. Good. Um, our phone numbers and email addresses, and there's a pretty significant gallery there of imagery, the kind of things that we do. We do a lot of long term time lapse on yep. construction projects. Wow. Um, Good. All over Australia. Yep, because that was going to be my next question. What 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 services do you offer? What do you do? We do still photography, video productions, mm -hmm. and time lapse and aerial photography. Any specific locations, or are we nationwide? No, anywhere. We we've got two projects in Victoria at the moment. We've been working in a mine out in Cobar. We've been working for BHP in South Australia. Got a lot of stuff in New South Wales. There's a lot of infrastructure activity going on. Wonderful. That's for sure. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Mate, look, it's been a joy having you uh, involved in our little extended FPV Australia family. Um, as, as I say, you, we didn't do your initial training, but you came on our chief pilots course, which was great. I'm glad you've, you've popped on our virtual couch today. 
uh, and uh, we've had a bit of a chat. It's awesome. I'll put all the details of your of your uh, organisation up on our website, um, thank you. mate. Uh, thank you once again. Look, I hope I hope restrictions lift to a point where we can all go about our business in some yeah. form. I want to see what your couch looks like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Some form of normality, that's right. Then you can come and sit on the actual couch. Yeah, that, that'd be really good. Mate, Chris from, uh, from Images for Business, thank you so much for joining us on the virtual couch. Um, guys, um, if, you, uh, if you're interested in the drone industry or, or the photography industry, you've got the, uh, Chris's website and our website. Jump on, have a look. If you've got any questions, fire us an email. You know where to find us. Uh, until next time, if you are flying a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, safely and responsibly. Safe skies for all. Enjoy. Thank you.